So the second section of this unit then, we'll talk about how you actually locate bugs. So um, when you have a, a, pro, a problem in your program that causes it to actually stop running, Python will stop and it'll show you what's called a traceback. So tracebacks are that long complicated error message you see. They can be quite daunting to read at first sight, but if you learn how to interpret them, then you're gonna figure out how to get the most information out of them. So if we take an example of some um, slightly dodgy code that's gone and thrown a trace back. So the in red, you see in the in the in the red cell, you get the, the information you get back from the um, program when you do this. And the thing to realize with this uh, trace back is that you have um, a sequence of um, blocks of code where it's showing you what's happened. So what it's actually doing is it's literally showing you how did it get to the point at which it fell over from the point at which you started your program. So at the uh, top of the trace back, you'll find the, the code that first off all started running your, your where it started running your code. And then as you go down through each let, separate little section of code, it's taking you into a different function, a different function, a different function, down to the point at which your code actually fell over. So at the bottom of the trace back, it shows you actually what the problem was. So in this case, it was a type error. Um, so it gives you um, the um, uh, uh, actual message you've got from the, the error, telling you that in this case, it says a float is not subscriptable. And then if we look back at the error, we'll see immediately above that, at the, at the bottom immediately above where it's told you the type error, it shows you the actual line of code where it realized it couldn't carry on any longer. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that line of code is necessarily wrong. It could be that this, that line of code is using some data that then has got um, uh, something that was different from what you were assuming was gonna be in that bit of data. So just because that's the line on which it's had the error doesn't mean that's actually a line with a, a mistake in it. Your mistake could be further back, which is why it's giving you this complete trace back. So in this case, what it's telling you is that um, we've got this problem on this line of code written, but it's not very obvious what's actually wrong with that. So we will then go back and look at the, the highlighted code um, uh, on there you go, well, that doesn't make much sense as to what's going wrong. So you look at the next block of code back up um, and that's then the function where this run. Now you'll see at the top of each of those blocks of lines, it's giving you a the name of a file. So it's giving you a, a, a path of a file. Um, so one thing to be said is that because this has been running in the notebook, the name of the file you've got is not particularly um, memorable because when you run a notebook, it actually creates a little temporary file for it to go and run that code in. So that's why you're seeing that the the, the name of the, the blossom block of files got a, a slightly weird, horrible name. Um, then the second uh, section of code up from the bottom, that's now inside um, somewhere in the SciPy package. Well, generally speaking, the um, things like NumPy and SciPy and Matplotlib the code in those packages is pretty well tested. So it's probably not actually a problem with, with the package itself. And so we need to go up another level to the uh, block above. Um, and then you see that's still in SciPy. Um, and we finally go up to the stop. And in that case, we're back into our own code. And um, what this is telling us is that in this particular case is that this function we've written um, isn't really designed to work well with the, the quad function that we're using from SciPy. This is why we've had this error. But the important take home message from here is this idea that you start at the bottom of the trace back, you identify what the error message is, and you work your way back up through the levels of code until you come to the bit of your code that actually inside the code you've written. And that's probably a good point to start looking to see what's going on. So being able to read these tracebacks is important. So recognizing how to interpret which file you're looking at and therefore um, which, um, which, and which function, which file, which line number, which function you're in, um, and to work your way back through the sequence of function A called function B called function C, and function C was the one that fell over, but in fact, maybe it was function A or B that was not right. <laughs> 